Good morning. This is Larry Green with San Juan Islands Community Network. And today we're talking with Liz Smith, who went through the uh, Leadership San Juan course, and she's going to talk a little bit about that experience. Good morning, Liz. Morning, Larry. How did you come to the islands and what do you do? I came to the islands in the last couple of years um, to be near family, actually. Um, my mother moved here a ways back um, and my brother also, he came up here um, uh, as a student at the University of Washington at, at Friday Harbor Labs to get his PhD. Um, so he moved here and then um, him and his partner were having a, a, a baby and um, it was just time, time to be close um, in our lives. So that's, that's how I came to be in the islands. And as for me, I am a filmmaker uh, and a writer by trade. Uh, I come from a background in science and conservation documentary. Uh, I'm really focused on media that creates positive change in the world. Uh, and I'm currently working on a feature doc called Youth v. Gov that's about the youth that are suing our government over climate change. Um, and our hope with that is to inspire folks to hold their governments accountable for their constitutional rights. Um, and then I also, I write fiction to entertain. So I actually, I have a short uh, plug, a short comedy play coming up for the Island Playwrights Festival at the San Juan Community Theater uh, in September. Why did you decide to do Leadership San Juan? I was invited uh, to do Leadership San Juan Islands by uh, Steve Heshebeck uh, because I was working with Carrie Upinko at the San Juan Community Foundation um, on a fundraiser for the New Grange Community Kitchen. Um, and she said, you should do Leadership San Juan. Um, and then she told Steve that I should do that. And so she was the one who sort of brought that together and made that happen. Um, and the reason uh, I was interested in LSJI is because it's all about community uh, and finding solutions to island challenges. And I really looked forward to meeting new friends um, and colleagues across the county and across the islands, which I did. Um, I met some of the best people uh, that I now call friends. So. That was why I decided to, to do Leadership San Juan Islands. And what was your favorite part of completing the course? My favorite part uh, was uh, the systems thinking piece, which uh, Jim Hooper does a number of lessons on systems thinking, which I, I really loved because it's all about how everything is connected uh, and how when you pull on one part of the community, it affects another part of the community. Um, and it's also about how all of the about the whole adds up, you know, um, from, from the sum of the parts. Uh, and it's, it's really important to see and understand those connections when you're trying to make an impact uh, or create positive change. And I really appreciate that LSGI takes systems thinking, takes a systems thinking approach um, and tries to introduce the, the participants to all the aspects of our community that have to work together. So um, this year for LSGI, uh, we didn't really get to complete our LSJ service projects as usual. Um, because of COVID, uh, we finished our course online on Zoom um, at the very end. And so we each really had to kind of figure out how to do our own community project from home. Uh, so one of the things I did back in March when we were uh, completing the course was to start this local Facebook group called Growing Food in the San Juan Islands. Uh, and I think, it's, I think it's grown to about 700 people now. Uh, and it's become this really positive place for islanders to talk about what kind of food that they're growing at home uh, and ask each other questions and share challenges and solutions. And there's a lot of, a number of experts sort of came in, expert growers came into it and then really newbie growers who were just starting this year because of the pandemic. And it's just been this great place for everyone to sort of connect in this little positive spot on the interwebs um, where we can sort of slow down and celebrate our victory gardens and our farms um, or commiserate about how we've lost plants to cabbage worms or aphids. Um, or how nothing is growing fast enough this year. Um, but it's just been a really nice uh, place to sort of create community. So I, I sort of ended up adapting that as a, a community service project during, um, during the end of LSJI this year. So I, I take it you're really into growing your own food, is that correct? I, I'm not very good at it. <laughs> so, um, but uh, I got into growing my own food um, a couple years back when I was in Maine. Um, I did a site visit at the main state prison with the warden there because we were doing, we were going to do some film screenings at the, the prison for a project to bring inspiring documentaries to the men there. And the warden, um, whose name is Randall Liberty, so his Warden Liberty, um, was this really incredible steward who was bringing um, arts and film and gardening into the prison as a, as a healing tool. Um, and he showed me these gardens where the men were tending and they were growing their own food. 
And I was so inspired by this notion of gardening as a healing tool that um, I ended up um, stopping on the way home, literally, and buying it like my first tomato plant. Um, and as, as it always happens with plants, I guess, apparently, you know, by the end of the summer, I, my deck was full of, of food and plants. Um, so when I moved back to Washington, um, I sought out more growing knowledge and I ended up doing the WSU Master Gardener course uh, and I worked on the annual veggie start sale um, the last two years. So, um, and I also joined the Sound Island Grange too. So I'm, I'm new to the gardening, farming, growing food community, but I absolutely love it. So did you have a sponsor for your tuition? I was actually sponsored um, for my LSJI class by the San Juan Island Grange, number 966, um, right here in Friday Harbor. Um, and I joined the Grange when I moved here because it's really, what I love about the Grange is that it's sort of, it's all about living life well um, and in community with each other. Uh, and our Grange members here on the island are just such a great group of growers and makers and keepers uh, and musicians and artists. And it's just, it's an inspirational bunch to spend time with. And I'm really grateful for them, um, especially as just moving here new. Um, and I also love going to the Contra dancing. Unfortunately, we haven't had Contra because of the pandemic. Um, but I'm, that's one of the things on the island that I'm so looking forward to getting back to once we're all back out in the community is to do the, um, the Monday night Contra dancing at the Grange. So uh, last year, uh, we started raising funds at the Grange for a model of the Grange kitchen to make a Grange community kitchen and uh, Grange member uh, Larry Soul did a, a whole bunch of fundraising for us to make this happen. Um, and then myself and Roger Ellison and Malcolm Suttles worked with a committee to basically plan out a new kitchen. So what we're really hoping for the new Grange community kitchen um, is to really just invite more of the community into the hall and into the Grange. Um, we're looking at doing community dinners once a month, um, having uh, courses taught on food preservation, um, and then also it'll be available for bakers and chefs and food processors um, to rent out as a commercial kitchen. Um, so it'll be certified for that um, so that people can come, Grange members and community members alike, everyone is welcome. Um, we'll be able to, to cook and bake and process things that you can then sell for local sale, like at the farmer's market. Um, and we really just, we want to create this place where folks can gather and share meals. I'm not sure what my next project is going to be, like my next local project. Uh, there's still a lot to do with the launch of the Grange Kitchen. Um, and then there's the next Master Gardener Veggie Start Sale will be here before we know it um, next spring. Um, but I think whatever it is, it's going to have to do with local food systems, building more sustainability into our island life. Um, those are two topics that I really care about and that I think are essential. I work a lot in my film, film and writing life. I work a lot in climate change. Um, and I think that um, community especially is, is essential, Co community and collaboration is essential to adapting to climate change um, and also just a new way of living in community with each other in the new, this new century. What do you love about living in the islands? What I love about living in the islands, I think is just the diversity of people. Um, I really, th there's some really incredible people in these islands and I think that's one thing whether it was through LSJI or the Grange or the Master Gardeners. And I know there's so many other groups that I haven't even sort of touched yet. Um, but I've met so many folks and we have this, you know, in, in, within those realms, we have this common sort of interest. But then when you actually start talking to people, people have come from such amazing backgrounds and careers. And we have artists and musicians and former business leaders. And it's just, it creates this underlying sense of, um, of just opportunity opportunity and imagination. And I feel like when we talk about things like sustainability, we just, we have the talent and the brains and the, um, the imagination to inspire a really, really cool place to be um, for the next century. So I'm excited about that. Liz, it's just been a pleasure talking to you and, and it's just uh, so wonderful to have you uh, as a, a member of the community. And uh, I'm sure that you've not only done great things, uh, as you've explained, but that there's a lot more to come from you. So thank you very much for uh, sharing your story with us today.